And by now, I'm sure most, if not all of you are aware that Rui Hachimura is officially a Laker. Now, uh, we don't know when his debut will begin. Uh, based on all reports, he's not going to be playing against the Clippers. Maybe he comes back against the Spurs or the Boston Celtics, but sooner or later, we are going to get to see him perform in a Lakers uniform, and I cannot wait. Uh, the plan is, based on reports, that Rui is going to play alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis, that they do want to work him at the three. Uh, he does have the size and the skill set and the athleticism. Uh, he has been primarily a four for his career, and that's probably where he is best suited uh, just to, to, to really hone in on his advantages. Uh, but still, He's a guy that if he can knock down the three ball consistently, can easily play the three and kind of evolve, right? LeBron at this point is probably best at the four anyway. Uh, so if you have Rui at the three, LeBron at the four, Davis at the five, then you got this really good sizable uh, front court. And that's what the Lakers have really lacked this season. You know, you got Patrick Beverly at times guarding the perimeter, uh, sizable wings. Well, now you got uh, Rui, who actually has real size, guarding, you know, the Paul Georges, the Kawhi Leonards of the world. And that's just a huge advantage for us and the Lakers. But obviously, the Lakers are very likely not going to stop there. We still hear all the reports, uh, all the conversations about, like, what's the next step? What's the next move? The Lakers are talking to the Spurs. The Lakers are talking to this team, right? And it makes the most sense now at this point because now your cap space is basically non-existent. I mean, you'd still probably have, depending on how it shapes up, how much uh, you re-sign Rui for, and then obviously Austin Reeves, based on reports, they want to keep him. Uh, so depending on how much you get those two for, maybe you have like 10 to 15 million, but realistically, you might not even have that much, uh, which means at that point, you're best to just kind of push your chips to the table at this point and, and try to make a push, try to make a move. And one of the things that the Lakers could really use is shooting, right? We know that they need shooting. Um, I'd still prefer getting some size on the perimeter, uh, just guys defensively that can guard the size, but shooting is a real thing, and the Lakers seem to be in the market for a big man, right? So Lakers want shooting. Boyan Bogdanovich, they're looking at big men. Nerlens Noels got reports of Yaka Pirtle. Uh, they've worked out DeMarcus Cousins and Myers Leonard. You know, they're trying to get size. They're trying to get another backup center, uh, which it makes sense, especially if you're going to run Rui at the three. Uh, it makes sense to go get another guy uh, to kind of run in the rotation, kind of be Anthony Davis insurance as well. Uh, Anthony Davis can play the four, can play the five, however you want to structure it. So what this brings up is a trade that has been rumored for since the, the beginning of time, uh, or at least the beginning of this season and the offseason, and a trade that pretty much was done until Jeannie Buss decided not to go through with it, and that is the Indiana Pacers trade, right? Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. Uh, Indiana is currently at a free fall ever since Halliburton got hurt. Uh, they're on a seven-game losing streak currently talking about uh, in this video, and they play again tonight. Very likely could be an eight-game losing streak, and they're only two games out of just not even being in the playoffs anymore and being, uh, you know, a potential lottery team. So, what does Indiana do at this point? Do they kind of let Halliburton kind of rest, get right, and, and you know, uh, take his time coming back, move Miles Turner, right? They weren't able to re-sign or extend Miles Turner, and the thought process is he's gone, right? Which, it makes a ton of sense. They've been trying to trade Miles Turner for like the last, like, three seasons. So, at, at some point, you know, Miles Turner's looking at it like, you didn't want me to be here to begin with. You were going to trade me in the offseason. Now I'm playing good, and all of a sudden you want to keep me. Like, no, it's not going to happen. And the Lakers are a team that could use both of these guys. Now, if you've been a subscriber to this channel for some time, uh, if you're not a subscriber, uh, then definitely hit that subscribe button. But regardless, like, if you've even just watched my videos for some time, you know that I'm not huge on the Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. I think we have bigger pressing needs, but we just answered one of those needs in Rui Hachimura, right? Like, before we got Rui, it was like we need, like, if you have a list of things that are that are a necessity and a dire need, right? Like, another center is at the bottom of the list, right? It's like size and perimeter defense and size on the wing, three-point shooting, snipers, guys like that. And then, yeah, we could use another big man. But why go and trade for another big man when we need those assets to go get a guy like Rui Hachimura, right? Or Hachimura. Uh, so you need that. We got that. 
So now it's like, okay, well, what else can we look at? Well, let, let's address the shooting and maybe now we can address the size. Now, personally, I still, this is still isn't my favorite trade. Although I do believe this makes a lot more sense now. I still do not like this trade for two unprotected firsts. If you could do it for one unprotected first and like a pick swap or a couple seconds, the Lakers still have their second this year. They didn't give up this year's second round, so they still have this year's second round. So if you could take this year's second round, unprotected first, and then maybe a future second round or a pick swap, then I would be okay with that. You know, you keep your other first, and then you could package like Patrick Beverly and Lonnie Walker and maybe go do that third move to really kind of... I mean, imagine if you could land when all is said and done, right? Like a Buddy Heald, uh, Miles Turner, Boyan, and uh, and Rui Hachimura, or maybe a Josh Richardson, or maybe, you know, maybe Alec Burke, right? Shooting like 45% from three, another shooting guard, right? Like, you can never have too much shooting. You can never have too much size. Uh, so those are two things that the Lakers could really kind of address here, and especially if you could do it for one first. If they still want two unprotected first, I don't really like it. It does, though, make more sense now to go do Miles Turner and Buddy Heald uh, because, again, the salary implications aren't as high as they were, right? You don't have the salary space anymore. So you might as well just, again, push the chips to the table. And even if you don't trade Patrick Beverly and Lonnie Walker, right, which you're probably losing them at the end of the season, but still, regardless, like let's say you don't do that other deal, Rui, Buddy, and Turner, right, like Miles, like that's that's a good like addition. Like we've talked about the Lakers need two or three quality players to really kind of be a contender. Well, here you go. And Miles Turner gives you that, uh, Anthony Davis insurance, but here's my concern, right? There's a couple things that we need to address. Obviously, uh, the things with Miles Turner. Miles Turner uh, has had issues in the past working with other big men, the injury history. Uh, he wants to basically be maxed out, so you're going to have to commit and overpay him, in my opinion. Um, you know, how is he going to fit with this team, with this roster? Uh, you're trading Russell Westbrook, so now what do you do? Do you move Dennis Schroeder? So now you're playing LeBron at the point again, kind of like on their championship run, which I don't think is the worst thing ever. And you have Dennis Schroeder coming off the bench. Uh, if that's the case, then I think you do need to go get an Alec Burke or a Josh Richardson uh, and then bring Buddy off the bench. You know, so you have a starting five of, say, LeBron at the point guard. Then you need a, a defensive three and D style shooting guards. So like an Alec Burke or Josh Richardson could help in that department. Um, that is actually obtainable and reasonable, right? And then you'd have uh, Rui Hachimura, Anthony Davis, and Miles Turner. That might be the best starting five in the league. And then your bench is still, you'd still have, you know, Dennis Schroeder, Austin Reeves, Buddy Heald, Winning Gabriel, but, you know, like it just you know, Thomas Bryant, right? Like you got this great rotation. Uh, and this makes sense again, if you're playing Rui at the three. Now also, you could also, if you wanted to bring Rui off the bench uh, and kind of let him evolve and develop, right? You're only going to have LeBron for probably two more seasons. So you could kind of let Rui kind of shine and come into his own, uh, you know, and then the games that LeBron doesn't play, uh, Hachimura can just plug in and kind of fill in the LeBron role. I mean, you're never going to fill the LeBron role, but you get what I mean. Like, be that sizable body that can come in and, and light it up. Uh, that could be good. And just kind of be the first one off the bench to replace and expel LeBron. And kind of he can get his 20 minutes, and you can do interchangeable lineups and kind of allow him to develop. And then once LeBron leaves, hopefully he's ready to go. He's getting into his prime. And now he's ready to blossom with Buddy Heald, Miles Turner, Anthony Davis. If you keep Anthony Davis, uh, you'd still have, you know, uh, very likely uh, other pieces that you've gotten over the years. Like, now you're in a good spot. Max Christie, maybe he develops and blossoms into his own. Uh, if you go and trade for, like, an Alec Burke, whatever. I, I think that this does make a lot more sense. I still don't like it for two first. I just don't. I still think you need to keep it one unprotected first. Uh, because you you are helping Indiana, right? Like, you're, you're putting them in a position to where they don't have to take on long-term salary. Uh, there was a report today that came out that the Milwaukee Bucks and Phoenix Suns were working on a three-team deal, and uh, they ended up, it ended up falling through from what it sounds like because of cap filler, right? And they would have had to take on salary, and they didn't want to take on salary, right? Because the whole reason they wanted to trade Hachimura was because they didn't want to pay him. Right? So why would you want to take on salary? That's the advantage that the Lakers have that other teams don't. 
right? The Lakers have just nothing but expiring contracts. So, yes, you get the same amount of assets that you would from anyone else, but you also don't have to take on long-term salary, right? If you went and trade Russell Westbrook, you don't have to take on long-term salary. Now, I would... I mean, it would be nice if we could get like a Brissette as well tied to that. Um, that is something that would be kind of cool. I don't know if they would do that, but, you know, I think it's at least worth like mentioning like, hey, you know, we want Brissette if we're going to give you an unprotected first. I do think the Lakers are in a better position to kind of negotiate now than they were in the offseason, especially with Russ. Like, you're fine keeping Russ. You got Hachimura, so you're not as desperate as you once were. Uh, you can go and do other deals, right? I mean, the Spurs, supposedly, uh, Josh Richardson, they're they're willing to move for one second. So you could say, like, we could go get a guy, right, for one second. Like, we could get Boyan, who's shooting 50, 40, 90, and is a big, bigger buddy healed and on an, a reasonable contract for the next two seasons. And, you know, like, you you have talking points to where you could go, hey, look, we could do this. We could do that, right? Like, what does Indiana, what direction does Indiana want to go to? And if that offer's still on the table, I don't think it's as bad as it once was. I was really concerned with that offer before. But if you can do it for one first, unprotected, even if it's 2027, 2027, unprotected first, give them, you know, two seconds, a pick swap, whatever. As long as you can keep that other first unprotected. If you get Buddy Hill to Miles Turner, I think I, I think it's not the worst thing anymore. I think that that's a solid move. Worst case, you got these three and Hachimura. And then you could, if you wanted to, take Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker, uh, maybe Damian Jones, package some stuff, and then go get... Uh, some other pieces, right? Maybe you go, maybe you do go get Josh Richardson. Maybe you do uh, still go try to get Boyan Bogdanovich or or just Alec Burke at that point. Or maybe you're looking elsewhere. Maybe you're trying to get another piece uh, from some other team. You know, something that that's out there, right? I just think that that would give you the depth. It'd give you the size. It'd give you the insurance. You get the dead eye shooter. You already have Hachimura. Miles Turner can shoot the three ball. Hopefully when Anthony Davis comes back, he can kind of continue to shoot well. His shooting was getting better as uh, before injury, so that could help. Um, but I, I do think if you get if you get Buddy Heald, uh, I would, if you did do this deal, like let's say the Lakers did do this deal, if you do do this deal, I think you try to go get Alec Burke or Boyan at that point. And I know some people might say like, you know, if you get Buddy Heald, like then why do you need Boyan? But one shooter one quality solid three-point shooter isn't going to change all your three-point shooting it's just not so we could use multiple um if we did get buddy i think i think boyan makes sense because you could get you could play him at the three or the four uh that really helps although alec burke is better defensively and he's shooting 45 percent from three but i just think like the lakers need more than just one dead eye shooter Right, like you, like the one thing you can't have more of in this league is shooting, especially if you have LeBron James. So if you get Buddy Hield and and Miles Turner, then yeah, you you do whatever you can to try to go get an Alec Burke or or Boyan Bogdanovich. That would be likely my next phase, I guess. Um, and I mean, look, if when all is said and done, if you turned Russell Westbrook, Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker, and Kendrick Nunn into Rui Hachimura, Buddy Hield. Miles Turner and Alec Burke or Boyan Bogdanovich, that that's a home run. That's a home run. That is a great deal. You got everything you need as a team, and you're probably one of, if not the best teams in the league. Um, but those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, fast question on you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Uh, what do you think? Do you think yes? Go do the Buddy Hield and Miles Turner deal. Do you think no? Uh, you know, uh, look elsewhere. Go do maybe the Spurs deal, the Hornets deal, something like that. Um, you know, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below.